What's going on guys? Steven here from DubC Studios 25 and we have a filmmaking tutorial here. This is going to be exciting. I plan on doing a few of these, but I've been, you know, messing around with some sample footage of the GH5 because I plan on getting the GH5 and I thought after doing a couple things, I thought I would make a little tutorial on how I did um, some footage uh, because I think I, I made some pretty nice grades. Here's a, a look at what I did here. And so I thought I would do a little tutorial for you guys if you plan on getting the GH5 or you're, you know, getting into color grading. So this could, you know, help you guys out if you want to start grading some stuff. So we're going to go into DaVinci Resolve. So yes, this tutorial is about using DaVinci and um, using the impulse LUTs with G the GH5. I'll provide a link to this footage. Um, thank you, Newman Films, by the way, for making that available for people to try out. But yeah, I mean, this camera's looking nice when you get it graded for sure. But yeah, so I'm going to show you guys kind of what you do. You'll uh, come to this media tab. You'll click on your, you know, device over here if you're using like an SSD or whatever. Like if you're using a Blackmagic or a RED camera or whatever, you'll have your SSD there. Or if you import it onto your hard drive, you'll click on it right there. You'll come over, you'll find your footage, and then you'll just, you know, import it in. And then you'll go to edit, and then all this, the footage will be in there. You drop it into your timeline. And like I did there, if you just want to conform automatically, I guess you can. I've never tried that, but you can do it. So yeah, you just bring it into your timeline, and then you're pretty much ready to go. Um, it's simpler than raw because we don't have to, you know, deal with any of this nonsense. But yeah, so I recommend these LUTs, um, the Impulse Ultimate Collection. It's a hundred bucks, and it looks amazing. And I'm just gonna do a basic tutorial. I'm I, I I'm actually gonna show you guys both ways that I would like to do grading I like this shot more I think this one's a lot nicer we'll go right there and we'll color off of that spot right there but I'll just show you guys a couple things you can do so like how impulse works is you'll have your node here right and uh, we're actually going to create two nodes you can go up to nodes add serial node or you can hit um, option or alt s and uh, that will create another node so what we're gonna do is go to our first one here we're actually going to also bring up our waveform monitor. So you'll go to workspace, you'll go to video scopes, and then on. And to make sure it's just a waveform, you'll have one up um, right there. And then you'll just move this right there. And so, yeah, so here's like our main exposure control. We're going to go into to log here because we're sh this these shots are in V-log. Um, so we're going to go to log here. We can change this. And so we're going to about center that exposure right there like that. Um, by moving this wheel up and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the first node and we're gonna go to 3d LUT and when you get this package you'll get all these you'll get all these cameras um, all this goofy stuff uh, that the, the LUTs are basically meant to you know work with each specific cameras color science so um, use whatever works and I think the closest since they don't have a uh, vlog they only have cine like D for the GH4 I think the closest to vlog as far as I could tell from playing around is Sony s log 2 so what you'll do is you'll go to s log 2 and I like these these film print emulation LUTs you have cineons which are a different workflow which I'll show in a little bit you have cineons you have um, film contrast and then you have the vision space uh, gamma curve thing which I never use but the film print emulations are, are the ones I like because I like to do my contrast and stuff on my own and I think this gives it a nice look so if we go to Fuji Pro you know FPE that changes the image quite a bit right there and then we can just kind of get an idea of like what the color what what color it's gonna do whatever we like one I really like is the uh, Kodak Gold Gen 6 um, I really like the look of that. So I'm going to go with that Gen 6 one, but there's all kinds here, you guys. I mean, there are tons of of film stocks for you to choose from. So we're going to go with that Kodak Gold um, Gen 6. And then what we're going to do to make this look a lot better, we're going to add some contrast. Oh, yeah. There we go. Add about 1.4 contrast. Drop our shadows down a little bit. That looks pretty good and then we'll drop the entire exposure range down and so that's kind of we have a nice little contrast the image we're not clipping I think we actually are clipping a little bit yeah we are on the uh, on the blacks so we'll bring that up okay 
that that looks pretty good I like the look of that right there and you know you can always adjust like your your pivot point and, and all that to kind of bring the range down or up like where you're wanting the contrast base to happen like if I want the contrast base to happen you know in the higher ranges I can I can turn this down and that's gonna you know give me more contrast up there but I always like to go like here about a, I, I think the base pivot will be good right there. So yeah, you adjust your contrast there, you pull your shadows down there, your mid-tones here, you know, so you can mess with that, and then you can do your highlights here. But yeah, this is just, I'm, I'm just kind of going kind of here so I can just cover everything um, so you guys can see what's going on. Now, the other thing I like to do in this first node here is add some sharpening. So what you'll do is go to this little drop um, thing right here. This this looks like, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> it, that right there beside the key, and you'll go to sharpen right here. And I would recommend, you know, ever sharpening your images, you know, pull this radius down to about 47, 46. Don't, you know, don't go too much. Then you turn into turn complete vectors, but let's just say about 46. I think 46 looks really good right there. So we're gonna go with that. And then we'll come to this other node right here, and we're going to add our saturation. And the reason that we do the saturation is another in another node is because that's pretty saturated. I think that actually looks really good. But say we didn't want that much saturation, we could go to the key on this second node, and we could go to the key output and turn the opacity down. And that's gonna give us less of that saturation effect. So I think it'll look um, really good at about eight, 800. I think that looks really, really nice. Um, and if you want to preview this image that you're doing in full screen, you can hit Command F, and then you just hit your spacebar, and you can watch your clip. Now that's looking pretty sweet, honestly. I'm really liking how this looks right here. Um, that looks really good. And of course, if you want to throw in your, you know cinematic 235 right now you can go to color you can go to output blanking and you can choose 235 and then you'll get your black bars um that'll apply for everything on your footage but yeah so um you can do that if you want to and that's pretty cool but we'll go back to full screen so we'll go to 1.77 the other way to do this so that looks really good what i'm gonna actually do is just so we don't lose that so we can use it for reference i'm gonna copy and paste um, this same thing in the timeline so we have our third clip here and I'm just gonna delete these nodes so you'll just you know you can double click and hit delete or you can right click and hit delete node so that works pretty well and oh one other thing I want to mention um if you just want to see like how big of a difference you've made click on your first node hit command D and disable the node. like look at that holy cow and you can hit command D on the saturation one and you've got you've got nothing right there like that's crazy another thing that you can do um, if you have the ultimate version of impulse is we can kind of set this up the same way we can do a serial node but this time we're gonna do three nodes and so what we'll do is the first node we're gonna convert this log image to a Cineon log image so we'll go to our Sony s log 2 again and let's just pick the Gen 6 right here, but let's pick Cineon. So now we have a different type of log here, as you can see. And then we're going to go over here, and we're actually going to go to our, yeah, we'll go to our third node, and we're actually going to convert this to our film print. So because you know how here we did our film print on our on our first node, that's all we did. We used the camera's log and just put the film print on it right away. This is converting it to a different log and using a completely different film print, really replicating like the old workflow. It's pretty cool, I think. So you'll go into your 3D LUT and go to your Cineon conversions. And then here, these are the four I would recommend using, are the Cinemon, Cin Cinemon, Cineon to Fuji and the Kodak uh, 2383 and 2393. I think those are really, really nice. But this Fuji one, I really like. I think that Fuji one looks pretty cool. It's, it's kind of bluish, but it's pretty neat. Then we can go to this one and see what that looks like. That one gives us a lot more contrast. And then that one, that that looks good. That looks really good for this particular shot is that Kodak 2393 right there. I think that looks really solid. So then we'll grade from here. Then what we'll do, of course, we'll go back into, into what we were doing earlier. We'll pull up our video scope, turn that on. We'll uh, center the exposure. And then we'll add our contrast. 
drop our shadows down to where they're just about to touch the bottom of the scope we'll go right there we'll go into our middle add our saturation and that looks pretty darn awesome you guys look at that look at how cool that is and that's that's just another kind of workflow you can do and then we can you know change this to see you know what uh did i not change it <laughs> did we just get out no i didn't change it yeah so we can see what like how it how it changes and um you know go through the different prints i that fuji looks really nice with the uh with the gray that's pretty pretty fancy looking i like that look i think it looks really cool and then yeah we'll go here we forgot to add our sharpening we'll do our sharpening again 46 and here i think we're good that that looks like really cool i think there's there's really no right and wrong as long as you just kind of want to avoid clipping you guys i mean it's up to you what you want it to look like but that's just kind of a quick that's a great image right there but that's just <laughs> that's just kind of a quick idea of um you know what you can do with these LUTs and then you can apply these to like what I like to do is apply them to all my footage um and then you know just kind of tweak everything so it's kind of the same and then I'll edit everything and then I'll bring all this back into here and then do my actual grading but this is just like to grade the the clips to base grade the clips and get you going because these are solid looks right here I think these these both look really nice so I'll go through another tip with you I will show you guys my um like what I like to do in my editing program because I don't like to do that you know that output blanking in this program because I like to you know usually reframe my footage then crop it in we'll render this out and all you have to do for that is go to your timeline and then you'll go to the deliver tab down here we'll get rid of this video scope we don't need that anymore we will go to individual source clips and what we will do is we will put this up to 4k like that we're not gonna export any audio We'll go, you'll go to your browser down here. This is where you're gonna choose where you're gonna put this. We'll go here, we'll go down here, we'll go to our LUT test. We'll just make a folder named proxies. Um, and we'll put that in there. Proxies, just because that's what we're editing with. 422HQ is a good, very good codec. I like it a lot. And uh, you'll just add, oh, make sure you click select all clips just in case. Add to render queue. And then you'll just hit start render. Okay, so DaVinci was being weird. I think it's because when I, because I had two of the same source clips, um, they were both the same name, so one was replacing the other as soon as it got done uh, rendering. So I just had to make it one clip. Um, and I don't think it rendered it didn't conform. Nope. So now we'll just conform that real quick By the way, if you're changing 60 frames to um, 24 frames, it's just 40% slower and So that will be what you want to change the speed to just so you're aware so we have our two clips here um, and what we'll do is we'll do the final touches now so what I like to do I created just a, a basic widescreen thing like a crop preset that I can just throw on here um, and that works works really good but you know sometimes you know the the footage isn't gonna be framed you know exactly how you want like we cut off her eyes there so you know you can kind of adjust this but now all I'll do is I will add um, some grain in in Final Cut Pro here I'll just go to film grain I think it's good enough, honestly. I think it looks pretty good. Not gonna use that version. We'll use realistic grain. We'll do about 40% or maybe 35%. I think that'll look nice. And then we'll do a vignette as well. Vignette, not vignette mask. We'll go vignette. So we'll just kind of adjust the size up a little bit and the fall off to where the, the darks are barely touching the corners like that. Just like that. I think that looks really solid, and that's that's what we do. That's gonna look pretty good. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I I, I am gonna teach. That's what I taught you guys how to do. You can grade like that, relatively quick. I think it's not too bad of a process, and the footage will look awesome um, because these people did a great job on these LUTs. And yeah, so you can do that, and then of course you can save this out and bring it back to DaVinci and grade it. Um, and then bring it back into your 
into your editor yeah so that's how you do it that's what you guys can achieve you guys can achieve some great looks and this is gonna be on the gh5 it's gonna look awesome i can't wait to get the camera that's it right there <laughs> so thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it i'd like to do more tutorials sometime this is my first one i've done sorry if it's not the best thing ever but i just wanted to help you guys out and do what i could show you guys explain it the best way i could so anyway thanks for watching the video guys i appreciate it i will see you all later you all have a great day please subscribe for more videos like comment with any questions i'd love to talk to you guys um let me know tricks if you guys have any better ways to do stuff let me know that'd be i really appreciate it. that'd be awesome i'd love to talk about this stuff with you guys so anyway thanks a lot guys i appreciate it i will see you later you all have a great day